Hey, 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 it's your girl Tamika Hall from TamikaInc.com. We publish authors from all around the world and we add a little kingdom touch to that. So in today's little mini masterclass, I'm gonna be talking to you entrepreneurs about how to copyright your book in just three easy steps. You've done the hard part, you've written the book, you've possibly even gotten it published at this point. And I know you're probably thinking to yourself, how in the world do I copyright my book? And I'm glad that you're thinking about that because it's so important. The reason why it's important is because you need to legally protect your work. And that is what this video is all about. So there's three things that you need to know about copywriting your book. The first one is you actually need to create copyright rights. That's a whole lot to say, right? The second thing you need to do is register a claim with the Library of Congress. And then the final thing that you'll need to do is post a copyright notice. It's not as hard as you think, I promise. Let's go ahead and take the next couple of Holy Ghost minutes. Yeah, always churchy, right? Always churchy. We're gonna take the next couple of minutes and I'm gonna show you how to do all of those things. So the first thing, let's talk about creating copyright rights. This is the beautiful thing. You've already done it. You wrote the book. The moment that you started writing your manuscript, whether it was on pen, paper, on a chicken wing, on the paper plate, uh, in your computer, your laptop, whatever it is, you actually created copyright rights. That's your work. You own the rights to that. Now, this is what I want you to understand. A lot of people will say, well, as long as you mail your manuscript to yourself in a sealed envelope and you never open it, that is sufficient for copyright. It's not. It's not. You mailing yourself something in an envelope is not going to necessarily hold up in court the same way that literally filing registering a claim with the Library of Congress would do. So that is what we're doing. So the first thing, you've already created the copyright rights. The second thing that you need to do is register a claim. It's going to take you about 15 minutes to do it, but let's go ahead and we're going to jump right into it right now. Okay, so let's get started on registering your literary work. Yay! So the first thing you're going to do is go to copyright.gov. Okay, you'll go to copyright.gov and we're going to click on register a copyright because this is what makes everything legal. Remember, you're going to log in to the electronic copy office. Well, once you get to this space, you're either going to log in with your information or you are going to select that you're a new user down here if you've never done it before. Um, I am a user, so I'm going to go ahead and just log into my account. If you already had any open cases or works, all of that stuff would be listed right here. But for what we're about to do, we're about to register a brand new work. So we're going to click standard application. There are a bunch of different application types that you can work on, such as photographs um, and different things like that. But primarily, most of us will be filing under a standard application. This page right here is going to let you know, um, it's going to give you information on how to apply the fee um, and how to either upload or mail in everything. If you're ready to start the application process, you'll just go up here, click start registration. So this is where we get down to the nitty gritty. We're going to be doing three different things. We're going to fill out all the forms. We're going to pay the fee and it's $55 if you're choosing to submit your work online or $85 if you're going to mail it in. I would say go ahead and do it online because ultimately it ends up being a faster process for you. And then the final thing is going to be how we submit our work. So let's get started. Our type of work. You would click on literary work because you are registering your book. Okay. You'll confirm that it is a literary work and then you'll continue. Next, we're going to actually submit our titles. So you would click a uh, new title and you would be able to fill in all the information about your title. The next thing that you see are is a tab for publication and completion. This is where you'll let them know whether or not it has been published or, you know, if you're still working on it. Next, you will be explaining who all of the authors are. Perhaps it's just you. So if it's just you, you will submit your information. If you have multiple authors that share the copyright, then everybody will go on that book or go on this particular form. 
under claimants, this is important if, for example, you know, if you are a publishing company, right? If you're a publishing company and you are filling this out on behalf of somebody else, then this is where you would fill out that information. If you're self-published, you're the claimant. Why this is important is because if there is ever a question about your copyright and somebody needs to reach you, then this is where they would need to be able to get your information, right? So let's look at it right here. If it's just you, your information would go here. So again, if somebody needed to talk to you, let's say they want to get permission to um, you know, publish a portion of, of your book or your workbook or whatever it may be, this is how they're going to reach you. Um, if there's an organization that is responsible for speaking on uh, you know, the author's behalf, then that's where either the uh, copyright office would connect or whomever it needs to connect with them. Next, you have limitation of claim. Uh, I'm not 100% well versed in this, um, but this is if you are, um, you know, if the work has been previously registered somewhere, then this is where you would need to submit information. You know, so for example, if you've got, if you've received copyright permission to publish somebody's artwork or what have you, this would go here. But again, I'm not 100% um, very well versed on this. I've never had to do this because I've only ever registered my own work. Rights and permission. So once again, this is who, who would somebody need to connect with regarding the rights and the different permissions? So again, this might be the same information that you listed under claimants, um, but that is what this is for. This is for correspondent. Who would the copyright office need to talk to regarding this application? So if it's you, here it goes. If it's an organization, for example, if you're the publishing company and you fill this out, then perhaps it's going to be you that needs to submit this information. But this is if the copyright office needs to connect with you. This is where the office needs to know who do we mail the actual certificate to. So even if you're submitting online, you will be receiving a, an, an, a certificate. And so they need to know where is it going to go? Is it going to go to an individual or is it going to go to, um, you know, an organization or what have you? This is special handling. Um, this is actually an expedited service for the copyright office. I've never been able to file anything special. So this is another area where I'm not 100% sure of. Um, and typically I just skip right past it because it never applies to me. Certification. This is where you would certify that you are the author um, and uh, the name of the certifying individual, which is most likely you. Then you would review all of your submission information and you would then uh, submit that. So now that you've registered for your claim, we're going to go to the third and final thing that you need to do to make sure that everything is in order for the copyright of your book. Now, this actually might already be posted inside of your book, especially if the book has already been published. And that is posting a copyright notice. Now, in order for you to have an official copyright notice, you need to have at least three things. You need to have the C that's in the bubble. That, that wasn't working, but you get it. You need to have that C that's inside of the circle. <laughs> And then you also need to have the original year of copyright. So if you copyrighted your year in 2020, you need to put 2020 there. And then you need to have the name of the author. Who owns the copyright? That is who needs to be listed on the copyright page. That same person is the person that should be actually listed on the cover of the book as well. And nowadays, if you're working with a printer, a lot of times, for example, let's say if you're working with KD, KDP or, you know, even Lightning Source or something like that, they will not even print your book unless the author name matches what is on the copyright page. So this is very, very, very important. And there's other things that you can put on the copyright page as well. For example, you may actually want to list um, how to obtain permission to uh, print certain portions of your book. You may want to include your address, your email, even a phone number on how to order additional books and things like that as well. But in a nutshell, that's all it was. Listen, don't allow the money to be a reason why you do not have legal grounds to walk into a courtroom if somebody decides that they want to steal your work. I don't care if you 
have to go and bag groceries. Baby, get your copyright. I love you. Remember you were created to make God famous. Have a blessed day. <laughs>